So here we are in Yamanashi on the foothills of Mount Fuji. This is a Shakodama, number 10 size shell that's so big, you cannot fire these in Tokyo. And tonight, we're gonna be firing these up, but more than that, I'm gonna be taking you inside of a Japanese fireworks manufacturing plant to see how Japanese fireworks are made. And then of course, we're gonna fire these up. Giant Shell Fireworks, a sight you won't see in central Tokyo, launched 330 meters up, about a thousand feet, exploding just as wide. Big shells like this are lowered carefully down the cannons, covered up to protect the launch. Each one is still handmade, the skill passed down through generations at each family-run company. Today we're launching 12 Giant Shell Fireworks, 150 kilometers away from the city of Tokyo. At sunset, when the remaining light dims and falls behind the Japanese Alps, the pyrotechnicians on site give it one last check before the launch. An 8.5 kilogram Shakudama shell explodes from the cannon approximately 6.5 seconds to reach peak elevation. One shell. A lot of work went into that very beautiful large explosion. There are different sizes of firework shells in Japan. The cannons for number 3, 4, 5, and 7. The number 10 Shakudama cannon. But in Japan, they do get bigger, a lot bigger. The rare number 20 Nishakudama, 30 San Shakudama, and 40 Yon Shakudama cannons are often buried into the ground. Here are the professional shell sizes and launch details. These smaller shells make up the bulk of fireworks festivals in Japan, the number 5 being the largest in urban areas. The number 7 and number 10 Shakudama are popular launches in sparsely populated areas. Weights and sizes get crazy after number 10. Nishakudama, San Shakudama, and the mother of them all, the Yon Shakudama, seen annually every September in Katakai Niigata. It's 420 kilograms, taking over six months to make one, 48 inches in diameter, the world's largest for decades. That at my feet is a Nishakudama. The Yon Shakudama is massive, taller than most seven-year-olds, fired from a cannon that's buried deep in the ground. Loaded carefully by a crane, its creator Honda-san launches two annually as the finale at Katakai. When one's launched, you gasp. Watch it go up 750 meters into the sky. And explode. It's truly the mother of all shells and can take over half a year to make just one. So how do they do that? Let's head to the Komatsu Fireworks Factory in Omagari Akita in Japan's north, surrounded by the region's famous Komachi rice. The CEO is a fifth generation owner. え、私どもの会社はですね、え、明治 of these buildings has a special purpose. We'll start at the beginning of the process. Step 1. Mixing the powder known as milling. The next step is granulation, making pellets of fireworks powder called stars. The powder is mixed with water to make a cement-like substance.
Its hand dribbled onto the round stars. This metal barrel spins the stars, the cement spreading evenly on all of them, making them just a little bit bigger. The stars are wet, a little powder is added. The process to make them larger takes a few weeks to several months, depending on the size of the shell it's for. They start with a little ceramic ball, smaller than a sesame seed. Soon, you'll see just how big they can get over time. The process is always ongoing, day by day. These balls are done for now and need to be taken to a special place. This room is very warm, used to dry the stars. Hey. Everything here except that electric barrel used to spin the stars is done by hand. Stars done drying go back to the barrel for more cement and powder to grow. So to make something like the number 40 Yon Shakudama that requires very large stars, you can see why it takes an amazing amount of time. The stars are constantly rotated and cared for here. This is the charge used to propel the shells into the sky, also made by hand. The core made with the husks of Akita Komachi rice. You may never look at a bowl of rice in Akita the same way again. The drying room can be used year-round no matter the weather, but when it's sunny, using the power of the sun is much preferred. The trays are rolled so the stars dry evenly. These are the size of gumballs, not yet finished, not if they want to be in the number 10 Shakudama shells. Back to the barrel for another coating. Many of the staff have been here for a long time. Komatsu-san is very involved with the production. Next, we head to the loading room where the stars are put into the shells. Staff are now making the number three shells and number 10 Shakudama shells. The number threes are a little bit smaller than a baseball, maybe the size of a plum. These are near the end of the process. So let's turn our attention to those shakudama. I was quickly drawn to the size of the pellets or stars for the number 10s. They're quite large. They're loaded into the paper mache wood hard shells lined evenly to the top. When it's perfect, it's tapped down.
Depending on the design of the desired explosion, another layer is added. Thus, this will be multicolored when it explodes several hundred meters into the sky. It's just the paper. The details in the composition is a mystery, like the paper used here, the makeup, the thickness. It's a guarded trade secret. Same as the powder mixture. Charge is added inside the shell to really propel the stars out. It really is powered by Akita rice. The two sides are tapped down, and when everything is just right, carefully, it's capped together like this. The shell is tapped and hammered down. On average, weighing about eight and a half kilograms or 19 pounds. The loading is pretty much complete. The shell halves are taped. The fuse is prepared. Notes written on the shell to know the contents. There are a lot of trade secrets here and this is as far as we can go with the details. Let's follow the shells to the final manufacturing process, the pasting. The shells make their way to this room where the staff is pasting paper to the outside of the shell. The process takes some time, a lot of rolling and skill to make sure it's even. This step ensures the strength of the shell when fired up and also helps the stars fan out, the amount of paper pasted to it playing a big role in how far they go. But the pressure from the pasting is required. The shells may be pasted several times with layers that require drying, pasting, drying, pasting. Larger shells require a lot more work. When finished and ready to dry, the shells are placed here. A couple of shakodamas and a few number sevens that will be used in our very own fireworks festival. Komatsu-san took me to the storage area. It's secured with heavy cement block walls around a reinforced steel box. This is where they keep the fireworks when it's finished in a very secure building for safety reasons. It's like a vault. This is This is 7.5cm, Some of these number two and threes will get used at our own fireworks event at the launch site. Everything needed for the event is packed up in trucks at the factory the morning of the event. From here, it's just a 10 minute drive to the Omagari Japanese National Competition launch site. The procession crosses the wide open Komachi rice paddies of Japan's Great North. They launch fireworks here quite often with festivals four times a year. Not the nicest place for vegetation to grow, as you can see. 
It's basically a big sandbox on the banks of the Omono River. For this event, we had 150 meters dedicated to our launch. It'll take all morning to prep everything. The event starts eight hours later after sunset. There's a lot to work to do, including setting up the electric firing systems and field controllers. I have to watch where I step down here. Let's hear about tonight's program from Komatsu-san. この企画一生懸命取り組みました。またあの地元の響屋さん、阿部屋さん、とともにまたあの福島のですね、関野さんや伊藤さんとともに御隣ジャパンの花火を一生懸命打ち上げたいと思います。まずあの御隣ジャパ
表あの要するに干渉するだけの実は価値があるんですねでヨーロッパアメリカは一発上げてもあんまりよく分かんないだから一発しか上げないと部員が出ますねもっといっぱい上げろってだから部下は違うんじゃないですかねそのなんていう花火をあの干渉するで日本の場合は夏の風物詩と言われますからねでそこへみんな集まってね昼間からで花火を打ち上がるまで時間を過ごすわけですよねでそれも楽しみの一つなので,でその文化っていうのは日本ならではじゃないでしょうかね。江戸時代、まあ、最初に花火をご覧になったのは徳川家康ともあるいはその前に伊達政宗とも言われてますけれど、まあ、その当時はおそらく丸いい花火はないですよねすすきのようなねあの今でいうおもちゃ花火の,そのこうしだれるような花火でそれが最初だったわけですよ。でそれがあの鍵屋さんっていうね鍵屋っていうのは、うん、そうそう奈良の奥からねいや江戸へ出てきてこれは商売になるっていうんで,で何台も重ねてそれで打ち上げ花火を作るようになったわけですよ。Traditional fireworks in the Edo period were made of three materials potassium nitrate, sulfur and charcoal giving it a dark red flare like this. イメージになってからねいろいろ海外から酸化剤が入って酸化剤っていうのは色味を出すような高温のね、まあ、薬剤ですけどそれとあの色味剤も入ってくることによっていろいろ工夫しながらあのあの一つの玉の中にどうやって星を並べてどうやってそのなんていうんですか自分の思うような形にするのかっていうのをいろいろ切磋琢磨しながらあのそれを重ねながらやっぱりやってきたんだろうと思いますね。Now let's launch those 500 fireworks Komatsu-san made and set up for us in Omagari. Welcome to the only in Japan fireworks festival. Hope from around the world. We love Japanese hanabi. Let's fireworks. Hello. There are many different styles of fireworks. Varying them is part of the artistry, making a complete body of light that flows together, often paired with music to enhance the senses, creating a stronger emotion for those watching.
It was a pretty impressive show, those booms setting off several car alarms in the neighborhood. In Japan, it's common for people to buy a shell like this to dedicate one to someone who is retiring from a job, someone who passed away, a birth of a child, anniversary, or marriage. It makes each blast special and personal, shared by everyone who sees it. One shell can be very special in Japan. Our Only in Japan community purchased a dozen of these for this launch in Yamanashi. Each one had a message including this one, dedicated to the birth of my son Leo, who left his mark on it for the launch. Every year in Japan, there are over 200 fireworks festivals called Hanabi Taikai, competition by sponsors launching shells for sometimes a million spectators, sometimes on national TV. Some festivals can last over two hours. When you come to Japan, especially in summer, you'll understand more about what makes these festivals so special. It's more than just fireworks in the sky. Join me for more Only in Japan adventures around every corner of the country right here on this channel, Only in Japan. Mata ne.